creating a structured framework for managing and utilizing data to achieve long-term solutions for economic, social, environmental brings us to the topic for today, data governance and policy for sustainable development. On this week's episode, I have in the studio three special guests. They will be introduced themselves shortly, but before then, I have His Excellency Ambassador Bubaka Issa Abdurrahman, Mr. Manuel Ntumba, and Mr. Herbert Ngaya. You are welcome for today's episode. Thank you. Thank you very much. So first of all, I'll start with Your Excellency, if you can briefly introduce yourself to the audience. Uh, my name is uh, Bubakar Issa Abdurrahman, and uh, I'm a former ambassador, and now I'm, I'm serving uh, as an expert and, uh, in the uh, issue of uh, development, sustainable development, and uh, yeah. Thank, Thank you, you very much for honoring this invitation. So, Mr. Manuel, introduce yourself for us briefly. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Manuel Ntumba. So, I'm an uh, advisor and I'm also founder of uh, the global public private partnership uh, called Todais Global Network. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Herbert? Yes, uh, I'm uh, Herbert Ngaya. Uh, formerly, uh, I'm an engineer, CNS engineer in uh, navigation, uh, uh, communication, navigation, and surveillance in uh, aviation. But I work as a Genesis expert at the uh, Africa StatNav Joint Program Office, mainly promoting the introduction of uh, this new, this new technology that is well known as GPS, but is globally uh, Genesis. Okay, thank you very much. I actually work on a project on the SBAS project. I think last two years, if I'm not wrong. So I'm, I'm very glad once again to have you on the show, but I wouldn't want to waste much time, so we are going to go straight <laughs> into the conversation for today. So first of all, the topic says data governance and policy for sustainable development. We want to start with the basis of it. So we would want to know by definition what data governance and data policy, so I will start with your excellency, please. Thank you very much for uh, having me uh, today to talk about uh, uh, issue of uh, data, data governance, and data policy. Uh, first of all, I can uh, tell you that uh, data is uh, a kind of uh, new oil of the 21th century. Um, it's also, data is also a new uh, factor of production. As uh, you know, it's uh, before in the history, we have uh, land, we have uh, work, we have capital as factor of production, but now we can add uh, data as a new factor of production. If you see um, today, the, the main big companies in the world are working with data. There is no uh, longer uh, uh, oil company who are in the leading, but it's data, it's Google, uh, some Chinese companies, Facebook, and so on. So they, 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 the factor of production, um, data become the factor of production, and we need to think how to govern this data, how to create policy, kind of framework in the legal uh, issue. So it's why I think we, all the state companies need to think about this issue of data. And uh, I, I think uh, uh, at the UN level, at some regional uh, organization level, and uh, at national level, we have some state that uh, are beginning to, to frame some kind of uh, data policy, data definition. This is very new. And uh, I think uh, African state also need to embark in these new trends. Thank you. Thank you very much for the submission. So I'll go to you, Mr. Herbert. What is your comment on my data? My, my comment on this is uh, mainly why do we need data today? Okay. Why do we need uh, uh, this uh, policy to govern this data? In fact, we are in the era where we are talking now about uh, big data. Instead of data, we are talking about big data. So for me, the importance of data can, uh, is demonstrated everywhere today. And one should organize in order to produce in a better way also to know why we are sharing this information or this data. So I think this, uh, this opportunity is really, we will explain during this uh, show, how can Africa take benefits of this new era of big data. Okay. So Mr. Manu, uh, I'm glad you're on the show with us. So moving on, 
uh, we are talking about data governance and policy, but who are the people supposed to be responsible for such data governance and policy? And why exactly, if you can give us some point as to why exactly we need data governance and policy, I will start again with you, Mr. Herbert. Yes, for me, uh, shortly I can say the people that should be responsible of data governance or policy, all the time I'm hearing about governance and policy, I think state are the first responsible. That's great. So <laughs> for me, at the first level, it should be state to govern and to manage this. After people will know the way they will uh, take profit of that, but the first responsible for that is uh, state. Okay. So, Your Excellency, any comments on that? Uh, as I, I, I said you uh, sh sh short before, um, the person who are responsible of uh, issue of data is, um, how can I say, people and organization also, institution. Because uh, as you know now, uh, everybody is using uh, like WhatsApp to communicate. Mm -hmm. um, everybody is using some, some news. And also, uh, people are producing data. So I think the society must come together to see how to govern the, those data. Because data, as I, I, I said it uh, early, as a factor of production, it's something that is very good for the society. And uh, it's, uh, it's mainly uh, the responsibility of the state and also the citizen. And they must come together to make some kind of dialogue and discussion mm. to see how, what is the rights and the obligation regarding those data. Okay. I'm very glad that we are getting much more insight into the conversation. Now, when we talk about data, some people will worry. What are some of the primary data sources? And then how do we ensure data quality? Uh, I'll start with Mr. Herbert again. Well, prim for me, primary data sources will be citizen information, recording okay. information. Sure. Sure. I think this is the first point where I can get data information. Mm. But of course, there are many sources of data now, like satellite data. Okay. Today we are talking about ge your, geospatial your field, data, <laughs> but uh, there is also my field of Genesis that is a very big provider of data today. Okay. And this data can help uh, developing many applications to face some challenges we are having in Africa. So, uh, how, how do we ensure the quality of the data then? Uh, also, uh, again, uh, quality will be standard that will define the quality. Okay. If we are following some standard and norms, for sure, at the end, we will de have data with uh, quality, required quality. Okay. So we found standard defined, we found international standard established and framework also established, we cannot ensure that we will have uh, data of quality. Okay. Any submissions? Yes, I think I would agree with uh, Mr. Erber. So in terms of, uh, you know, the data collection and data integration in the different, across the different sector, it's important to have the standards. Ba based on the standards, you can define what you call, you know, the uh, a qualified uh, data uh, yeah, or, or not for what you want to implement it for. Okay. So the data, the data you are collecting uh, to use in the, f the finance sector might not be the same you will need sure. in the climate sure. for mm -hmm. climate monitoring. So okay. the standards, it would depend on the standards. All right. yes. All right. <laughs> so Your Excellency? Yes, data uh, have uh, many uh, producers, I think. Um, you know, uh, in each country, uh, national statistic uh, office are producing some, some national data. And uh, we have also international organization uh, that like UN and some. And there is also data uh, produced now by uh, a private company, very sure. big one. And uh, I think at the international level, it's uh, a kind of uh, how the, the issue is that how we can uh, share those data, how we can uh, democratize them because the, the issue also is the issue of access to the data to okay. work with them so uh, uh, everyone have uh, the right to access to some data and to use them okay. you know um, yeah so mr manuel you spoke about standards so i will come to you on this one what some of the mechanisms that we can establish that will enable the sharing of data between the various stakeholders Okay. Talking about governments, uh, international organizations, and local community members, and all that. Yes. So I, I will I will go 
Uh, my first example would go with satellite data <laughs> 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 because yeah um, I, I have more case studies I can mention from okay. that perspective okay. so in terms of satellite data uh, you know if you take uh, many countries in the uh, emerging world most of the countries do not have their own satellites okay. so to have satellite data they need to work with other governments or other companies so with that uh, what is established we call it public private partnership allowing uh, government and intergovernmental institutions to work with the private sector in terms of to have access to the data but uh, you know in that public-private uh, relationship, it's important to have um, uh, trust. Okay. So uh, I think moving forward, I will go in detail in terms of regulations mm -hmm. that are in place to in ensure the trust between, uh, you know, data sharing between the private sector and the public sector. Uh, public sector. Okay. So yes. any additions? No, I think uh, Manuel has said what we should say on this field. In fact, regulation which will be the main problem. If we can regulate and we can follow some standard, for sure we will achieve what we are expecting on this field of data. Earlier we spoke about the state being the first body that should be responsible for data governance and policy, but if the states are the primary ones, wouldn't they be the ones who put in those mechanisms at first, or the private sector would have to initiate those, those activities at first? Your Marcel. Yeah, I think uh, the the state is uh, responsible for uh, many things in this in the in the state. So uh, I think the the state is helping okay. to many actors who are involved in the economic development to have those data. Even it's uh, public service uh, re region in many sectors like uh, health, education. Um, economic uh, business management um, and uh, it's a tool but it's citizens in their institution that need to come together and then to you know to define the, um, the regulation what kind of regulation we need and uh, and this is a, a very big issue as you know because uh, data is uh, uh, something uh, very intangible okay. it's an in intangible good so it's not physical good. So you, 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 you can't, uh, so sometimes the uh, data they don't, uh, uh, you know, uh, or are flowing over, uh, over borders and sure. something like that. So it's very new issue. And uh, I think uh, in Africa we need to, yeah, you need to, to, to begin to think about how to, to regulate those data and how we can use, it, use them for the development, for uh, fighting uh, you know, poverty. It's a, a, a big issue. Sure. Yeah. Back to you, Mr. Manuel. <laughs> <laughs> so we are talking about the mechanisms in place, who should be responsible, and how to collaborate between the various stakeholders. Now, talking in terms of protocol, how do we ensure data consistency and the interoperability between the various stakeholders? Okay, uh, thank you. So, um, in terms of, uh, um, you know, uh, if I take uh, satellite data or if I, I can move forward and talk about geospatial data. So, okay. in terms of geospatial data, then we come with uh, geographic information. So, it's not just collected by satellite, but also by drones, by sensors. Yes, so maybe I, I, I should uh, maybe talk about geospatial data Quite. instead of <laughs> the yeah the satellite data aspect so in terms of geospatial data there is um, a regulatory board um, uh, a UN committee that is in charge of sharing uh, the use and the sharing uh, of the data okay. so that uh, specific committee ensures that the private the big uh, private companies the manufacturers of the satellites okay. do not misuse the data that they are collected on uh, they are collecting on a specific country which means before using a specific data uh, that they are collect that are collected via satellite you know they need the approval from the government or they need to have a certain partnership with the specific government in order to be able to to use it but at the same time 
you know, that body ensures, that committee ensures uh, the negotiation, you know, with the private sector to ensure that they can give access to that data to the government. So it's not just to regulate them, for them to not misuse it, but also to encourage them to make the data available to the governments to, to use it. So I can give that as one of the examples. That, that's quite insightful. Mr. Behelbert, any comments? Yes, my comment will be uh, on the use of some sensitive data. Yes. <laughs> uh, in fact, uh, today we are talking about uh, privacy. Mm -hmm. So if we don't define some uh, regulatory framework, we will sometimes misuse this data. Sure. I think at the level of EU, there is a, an EU convention that was signed the, for the cyber security, for instance, and to persuade data protections. I think data protection is a, a big yes. problem, yes. and once one tackled it and considered it at high level, for those data that will serve as uh, geospatial data or Genesis data that we can get freely, this data should be considered for the development of some specific appli applications to really uh, achieve some uh, SDG, uh, AU SDG. Normally, we, you, see, you see, for instance, that during the COVID-19, uh, mm -hmm. GPS or Genesis was uh, highly used. Sure. Data was highly used to follow or to monitor uh, the movement of people uh, according the to well uh, well uh, well the well spread well. of the disease. Sure. So this is what I can mention on this point. Okay, Your Excellency, uh, we are still talking about the interoperability and also the data consistency yeah. among the various stakeholders. Yeah, it's a, the issue of uh, data consistency is very, very important. As you know, we are uh, dealing with uh, a massive data, sure. the, the volume is very important, and uh, there is also a kind of uh, velocity because data are uh, moving very, very in real time, and uh, uh, we have also uh, the, the, the varieties of data because data is concerning all the sector of, uh, of SDGs, if you take SDGs as a, a framework. And uh, the, the, the veracity is a, a big issue. Um, and uh, but regarding the SDGs, we 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 don't need to have a, at 100% uh, accuracy sure. to, to to work with data. And uh, for Africa, even if we have something that is uh, quite uh, you know uh, approaching the reality, we can work with, we, we can work with, work with it. And. Uh, the issue of accuracy, we see. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking about the the issue of uh, of fake news. How to because we we are it, there is a development of artificial intelligence and uh, some uh, algorithms that are are going now. And we know there is a m many fake news and uh, misinformation, and that is an an threat to to cohesion of the society. And uh, so we need to put in place some kind of policy. And some guideline that uh, help uh, you know uh, many all the citizens, uh, government, uh, grassroots organization, and state to um, uh, fight against this uh, misinformation. All right. So now we we move into as data protection and then for data protection regulations. We spoke about having the access to the data to properly use the data for SDGs for development and all that. Now, you spoke earlier about a regulatory committee that deals with the geospatial aspect. But in general, how do we ensure data protection? Uh, I would like to start with you. Okay, so yes, uh, in terms of uh, geospatial data, as I said, it, um, um, it, it's, uh, um, uh, um, um, I would say, a group of uh, data that are coming together, it's not just one aspect of data. Okay. But there are different types of data. In terms of big data, we have a different kind. Um, and speaking of data privacy, I think it's important that you know the regulatory or the steering committee in all the different sectors should be able to um, address the aspect of data privacy in their specific sector. Because if you take the finance sector, of course, geospatial data, geographic data are used for insurance and risk 
uh, management but there are other types of financial data that are not related to um, satellite uh, necessarily. So the finance sector should be able to have a steering committee that is ensuring data privacy in terms of uh, banking or uh, you know other aspects of the, the finance sector as well. Okay, so Mr. Herbert? Yes, what I can hide uh, on this point is we, you know, we have data, but we have uh, many kind of data. Mm -hmm. So one thing should be we should classify this data. Okay. okay. So to know exactly which data need really uh, some regulatory, which data will not cause problems so th that can be used without any problem. So that the classification of data is uh, is something that will, shall be shared among people. And once we know that this data uh, need more protection, we should put in place some rules to for the use of this data. This is what I can add. This is really about classification of those data. So uh, talking about the classification, talking about having steering committees that can ensure the protection, Your Excellency, what will be your comment on that? Um, about the issue of uh, protection of data and uh, um, we, we need to have a kind of equilibrium between the, the privacy concerning the personal data and the necessity to have uh, an open data for the, for the good, for, for good of the society because uh, this is a kind of equilibrium we need, we need to have because we need to have um, to open the, the data so that p people can use them, even it's a government, uh, it's a public, pu private sector, and uh, we need also to protect people, uh, you know, uh, privacy. That's a that's a kind of equilibrium. I think in the in many countries we have some law that protect these uh, uh, these uh, these privacy. Uh, for Africa, the most important thing is to 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 build some kind of innovation in the data. Because if you don't have uh, many data and you don't understand the issue of data, uh, you, you can't, you can't uh, use them for the sustainable development goal. Sure. Because we need to first to develop this uh, mindset of, of data uh, to, to drive a decision, you know, to have a good policy for the future and then to tackle some, uh, you know, big challenge that we face uh, in our, our time. Now we, we establish that we need a steering committee, classification, finding an equilibrium. But amidst all that, um, how do we balance the information? Because early on you spoke about not misusing it. If you talk about geospatial data, which I am now getting to know much more on, it deals with getting uh, information or data from a geographical aspect. So imagine I have a company in a different country and I'm having access to that data and I'm in a different country, which is, I'm not a native of that country. How do I find the balance between having access to data in that other country and also being transparent at the same time with the kind of data I use? I, I would like to start with you on that. Okay. So I want us to deal more with data uh, access, balance, and then the transparency. You know, because I know from some research that some countries have access to, we spoke about the volume of data or big data, it, and then they are not that open to people. Now, when we have access to it, how do we ensure the balance between how we use it and the transparency we are supposed to reflect in the use of the data? Okay. So uh, I will go with two aspects. Okay. So the, the first aspect uh, would be, you know, having um, uh, a transparent communication and dialogue mm -hmm. between the parties, between the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. So I think you are right because some of the companies, they mm -hmm. have access to those uh, data and, you know, you can go through a lot of processes, but you will never have okay. access sure. to those sure. uh, data. But some of the companies are rather, you know, open. open. So at Todas Global Network, we are partner with uh, Airbus. Okay. So a division of Airbus focusing on geospatial intelligence called Airbus Intelligence, mm -hmm. and uh, who they are providing access to, to that data. Now, I think the other aspect that you brought is uh, in terms the transparency. when we have the access, so how to ensure transparency. Mm -hmm. So as I said, communication. So it's important to discuss directly, like for the company to discuss 
to be in, in direct communication with the government so that the government can say okay you we can allow you only to use this part of our of our data we don't want you to use this aspect because of privacy questions so it's important to communicate yes and um, the second aspect in terms of access that I will bring is inclusion because it's important to involve the, um, the community in terms of youth inclusion, women inclusion, you know, uh, marginalized communities should also be involved in the process of, of data. I'm not saying uh, sensitive uh, that access to sensitive data should be given to everyone. That's not <laughs> what I'm saying. But they should be involved in the studies, in the research, in the in the different aspects uh, in terms of data integration. Thank you. So, Mr. Herbert, any submission? Yes, maybe uh, what I can add on top of what uh, Manuel has said is the fact that today we have uh, many uses of data that can be done. Of course, for the data that need privacy, yes, we need some rule to regulate all the access that cannot be given to all people. But for data that will be used, for scientific purpose is I think we have to encourage people to share this data <laughs> because we need to share data. Uh, sometimes uh, we, we, we meet with people, they say we don't have data in Africa when talking about Genesis data. Mm -hmm. But in the, over time we met other people, they say, but we have data, but we don't know where are these data. Mm -hmm. So we should encourage people really to share this kind of data mm -hmm for the good of, of Africa, because of course we need to develop our own uh, application, mostly develop our own applications. I see you are laying emphasis on Yes, because, because, because for me, we have problem. If we have problem, we have to develop solution. Sure. So solution will come with data. If solution is coming from data, it means we have to share information. And uh, I can take the example of uh, a kind of project ongoing in Africa, like GMS Africa. Okay. GMS Africa, they put a kind of framework in which they are sharing data. Mm -hmm. So you have data, but you have to know where can I put this data to give access to other people. So this is the kind of things I, I think we need to encourage in Africa. <laughs> very, very great submissions. Uh, I'm now moving to Your Excellency. Thank you very much. Um, to give an concrete example, I'm collaborating with uh, uh, World Data Lab, okay. uh, um, we, which is a, a, a worldwide company who is tracking SDGs in real time. Okay. And uh, we, we develop at the World Data Lab uh, uh, data set and tool that uh, track all the SDGs in real time. We have uh, built some kind of clock, and we can, you can see it, the clock on, on poverty. You can see how the, the poverty is uh, uh, reducing or increasing in the worldwide for in any country. And we also build a, an application uh, on uh, uh, hunger, it's a clock of hunger, a uh, clock of water scarcity, and also uh, a clock on emission, you know, to, to name few. And this is give people, this government to see what is uh, if there is a uh, on track or off track and then they can take some decision basing on this data and i we encourage also government to 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 make this is national national level sure. but it's 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 be good to be at the sub regional level so that a government can see where poverty is increasing where poverty is de is decreasing and what kind of policy we need to implement this is very uh, a very new innovative tool and uh, I, I really encourage you to go to the, to see on these, those to visit those clo those clock sure. and to see uh, how data can be democratized and uh, very accessible. Um, thank you. Now we we know in the world nothing is actually static; everything is moving. You spoke earlier about tracking the SDGs. Now, when it comes to situations where there are changes, how how do uh, we use data or how data governance and policy to, uh, how do I properly put it, to adapt to the changing situations. I, I would like to start with you, Mr. Herbert. Mm, uh, situations change every day. How do you adapt with the use of data governance and policy? Uh, 
Uh, I think uh, with the, ch the change of situation everywhere, it's where we see really the need of data. Exactly. <laughs> where we see the, really the need of data. Because if we have some data and we can monitor this data to predict some situations, which, which can bring us at the level where we can develop models in order to manage really this uh, situation. This is what I can tell myself, you, uh, Mr. Bing. Any comments? Yes, yes, sure. So I think, uh, you know, uh, I'll give the example of disaster risk reduction. Okay. In terms of disaster risk reduction, I, I believe if you, if you ask most of the countries, they will say that they need data. Mm. Yes. But I think there is a need also for communication from the private sector and the private companies so that, you know, in terms of access to the data, because uh, sometimes the policymakers do not um, have the enough information on how data infrastructure can help in this sector, in that sector. So uh, with, uh, um, I, I will stay with our partner Airbus. So the recent satellite they launch is called uh, Playyard Neo uh, satellite, and it's um, um, a, a two constellation uh, satellite uh, with 30 centimeter resolution. And the imagery is focusing like mostly on the sustainable development goals, you know, focusing on the different sectors and how those data can be integrated directly in the specific sector. So I think there is a need for communication. In ter I think His Excellency mentioned his work with World Data Lab okay. in terms of, uh, you know, using data to track the SDGs. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so I think there is a need for communication so that the different parties can know how those data can help uh, uh, you know, in the different sectors. Thank you. You spoke earlier about infrastructure. That is something off the topic, actually. But uh, do we oftentimes get the funding or the financing f to to give much into research, you know, data, the exploration of data, and even how to use the data? Is it that easy to get funding into such uh, data research, if I can put it? Okay. So I would say it would depend on the sector. Okay. Because in some sectors, the research focus is on data. In some sectors, like disaster risk reduction, you need to say that we need data before <laughs> people will bring data in the discussion. But I think, yeah, maybe Mr. Erber can also highlight uh, that okay. aspect of research uh, better. So, <laughs> Mr. Manuel has handed over to <laughs> Yes. In, in fact, if we want to have a fund, it's, um, government have to take data policy as uh, uh, a very big concern for them. If they really consider data policy and governance as a big concern, they will put funds for that and people's solution will be developed to achieve the SDG. Your Excellency. Yeah, thank you very much. I think, as I said it earlier, data can improve the people's lives and uh, data can help to um, build a better policies. What are some of the recommendations you'd want to give on yeah. data governance and policy? Things that can help us to make the SDGs better or to achieve much more of them to raise the level of the standards of people. Yeah. Thank you very much. So as I said, uh, uh, data is uh, very useful to improve the people's life and uh, we need to create a kind of awareness uh, for, for data and uh, at the school level also, at the university level, at the youth and the women, we need to encourage them to explore those data and to play with the data because we can also play with the data and to solve problem with data. Because as I said, data is a, a tool that uh, help uh, productivity development and also help us to, uh, to implement the, the SDGs that are very important for the humanity. And uh, the recommendation is that uh, uh, for African countries, it's not an advice, but I think it's good to make uh, a national strategy of data. Mm -hmm. That's a very new thing, and I think every state need to think about it and then to invite people and then to discuss and to dialogue about what are we going to uh, do with our data, how data can help us to solve our problem and to improve the uh, uh, condition of the people. That's, that's my, my take about the recommendation. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Mr. Herbert, what are some of your recommendations? Yes, I think uh, I will be online with uh, the ambassador uh, because 
for me, as we say, they said, uh, when you have information, we have a power. <laughs> information means data. Ah, sure. So if our, our continent is smart to be at the top, we want to have a power, we should push really to have uh, data governance and policy as prior concern for all the states. I think this is my advice that I gave, and I will encourage also scientific scientists and uh, private and all the organization to share data. If we share data, we can improve the way of managing them. Also, today, all the country cannot have data center, but if we say we, we can share data, we can after access to this data and do what we, we, we can do with this data. This is my call. Thank you very much. We'll take the last comment from Mr. Manuel. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. So I think I will come back to what uh, Mr. Herbert said about data classification. Because when we talk about big data, usually we think it's too big <laughs> and we don't know where to use it. So it's important that we classify those data so that we can know, you know, where, in which sectors and like in terms of disaster risk reduction, in terms of this and that, which type of data do we need? And I think, what, as you said, when it comes to data privacy, yes, so it's also needed that the data should be classified so that we can know which level of class, uh, privacy we need for the different type of, of data. And as His Excellency highlighted, you know, it's important to make sure that those that are being used to contribute to the society for the sustainable development goals and to, to promote, to ensure, uh, to reduce poverty and yeah, to, to, to contribute to socioeconomic progress. Thank you so much. So, viewers, it's been a very insightful and a very good experience to have our special guest on the show, His Excellency Ambassador Issa Bubaka Abdurrahman, and also Mr. Herbert Ngaya and Mr. Manuel Ntumba on the Thank show to discuss much. data governance and policy for sustainable development. You can follow this show every Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10.30 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. Catch a repeat same time on Sundays. And on Facebook is the key point with double I. Stay tuned for more. And welcome to another episode next week.